Welcome, everyone, to the SFL Schedule Release Show. I am SFL Commissioner Cameron Irvine, and tonight you'll get a chance to see all of the matchups and where they fall on the Winter 2020 slate. Joining me tonight for the studious analysts we start in Canada, the owner of the Vancouver Legion, Andy Hamilton. How you doing, Andy? Hey, Cam, doing well. How are you? I'm awesome. The free safety of the Las Vegas Fury, Jonathan Taylor Sconsing is here. How you doing, Jonathan? Hey. Doing pretty good, pretty good, thank you. The tight end of the London Knights, Robert Garrett Jr. is here. How you doing, Robert? Oh, I'm doing well. I'm uh, pretty happy to be here. And a rookie on the scene, Phoenix Jones. How you doing, Phoenix? Doing great, Cam. Thanks for having me on. You ready to get drafted? I am. All right, awesome. Well, uh, we've got our panel here, and uh, we're ready to go. 65 of you watching right now. Shout-outs to Mr. Sandman57, D-Day54, Mastermind450, JmanATL06, Rhett Sawyer, Mike and Porta, Plague 7 is in the house, Johnny 2K, Rizabit, Cheeseburger Rivers 74, uh, Jack Brown's here, Coach Craven, Just Mal Jeff Malinishin, Dax of the Flame, Matthew Nola, and many others. All right, uh, without further ado, let's get a look at week one action. Your opening night game will be the Denver Nightwings hosting the Florida Storm, the winners of the last four championships. Denver will raise their first banner uh, in front of a team that's won three in a row from season 10 to season 12 and looking to get back there. That is the, your opening night season kickoff game of week one. Other uh, games of note, Seattle is at Baltimore, a rematch of that wild playoff game from last season. Arizona is at Houston. Eddie Gage returns to face the team he used to co-own with DeMond Simeon. Atlanta is at Jacksonville as Jacksonville hosts their first SFL game. Carolina, St. Louis, Chicago, Tulsa, Vegas, Mexico City, London, Charleston, Sioux Falls, Queen City, and Vancouver at New Orleans. We start with Andy. Andy, uh, thoughts on the season kickoff game and what else stands out to you in week one? Well, Florida and Denver uh, will be an exciting matchup. I'm very interested to see how that one plays out. Uh, actually, we're two of the teams that I pegged might be uh, in the championship. And obviously, Cam, in uh, season 12, those two faced off in the championship. Interesting to see them run it back again, but to me, the game that uh, sticks out is that Arizona at Houston game. Lots of intrigue there. Eddie obviously running the defense for DeMond for all those years. DeMond running the offense without one another against one another. So very interested to see how that one plays out myself. All right, Jonathan, what are your thoughts on the week one slate? What game stands out to you? Well, for sure, the Florida-Denver game looks is going to be amazing. Those two have been two powerhouses in the league for a while now. But besides those two, I think a game that could go under people's radar, which ended up being pretty important and pretty big, is going to be that Carolina-St. Louis game. Those are two extremely young quarterbacks, and I'm like, extremely interested to see how they do against each other's defenses. And I think the offensive coordinators are going to take a big step this next year and get them more comfortable in their systems. Robert, what caught your eye? Yeah, I, um, I mean, I kind of want to piggyback off of Jonathan. You know, uh, when you have two teams like Carolina and St. Louis that come off of rough seasons uh, the past season, uh, they really just want to get started hot and get going and kind of prove that, you know, last year may have been a fluke and that, you know, they can become something. All right, Phoenix, what's uh, what are you looking at for week one? I'm very interested in the Vancouver-New Orleans game, uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I think uh, the, the Pharaohs struggled a, a little bit last year. Uh, they, uh, they, they, had, you know, they needed a little bit of a running game, so I think they made a big splash this past uh, offseason when they went and uh, 
I think they're a pretty good job interview they saw last year when they played against Streeter in, in London. He put up quite a bit of yards, 425s and seven touchdowns. I have a feeling uh, Aaron Harrington and the owner uh, and the GM, Sandra Gold, they made, a, they made a sticky note on their flight home, say, hey, you know what? Call the bank, see how much money we got. We got to get this guy on the team. So I think when they did that, they uh, improved their game. I'm, I'm interested to see what happens. So that's a look at week one. The dates and times of these games will depend on television will be released at a later date. And of course, the SFL Rookie Draft live from FTF Studios Saturday, December 14th was 9 p.m. Eastern. But we might uh, actually get to piggyback off of a live program just before us. So that time could be slightly adjusted. Stay tuned to SimulationFL.net and the League Alerts section of Discord for more information. With that said, let's get to week number two. Headlined by Arizona hosting Tulsa. Deacon Nickens played in Oklahoma City. Now the quarterback of Tulsa. Uh, of course, Oklahoma City, now Arizona. And Ashley Jackson, along with Kanye Rockefeller, former members of the Desperados, now in Arizona. It'll be the inaugural SFL game in Arizona as uh, Eddie Gage and the boys and girls Square off against Tulsa. Other notable matchups, championship rematch in Seattle for the Tyrants home opener and the Florida rivalry. Uh, it, well, the Florida rivalry resumes now that uh, there's a second team in Florida, but Jacksonville and Florida have known each other for quite some time and will be all over it. Other matchups, Baltimore, Mexico City, Carolina, New Orleans, Charleston, Vancouver, Chicago, Queen City, Houston, Sioux Falls, Vegas, Atlanta, and St. Louis, London. We'll start with Jonathan, your week two standout. Uh, for me, I, I really think that Charleston and Vancouver, I think that game's going to be extremely good. I think both teams are uh, pretty perfect for each other. The way their rosters are set up and the way that their talent is, I think the game's going to end up being extremely close, and that's the one that I'm definitely watching out for, I think, in week two. All right, Robert, what say you? The standout game for me in week two would definitely have to be Denver at Seattle. I mean, you're taking two powerhouses from last season with the championship rematch. Denver under a completely new revamped coaching staff and Seattle just piling on more defensive talent than they already had. I, I think that's going to be an incredible matchup to watch. Phoenix, what you got your eye on? I'm keeping an eye on Tulsa, Arizona. I think there's going to be a lot of, that's going to be a physical game. I think there's a lot of animosity in, I think in that game, uh, I think Deacon, going to uh, uh, not going to Arizona with, with Eddie's probably gonna upset him a little bit give him some motivation you know Eddie went with uh, with Ashley instead so I think they're, they both have something to prove to the other I think it'll be an exciting game all right Andy week two wrap us up well to me an interesting matchup here is the uh, Chicago and Queen City game Chicago only lost to four teams last season Queen City was one of them so i'm interested to see how the wildcats go into buffalo and take on the corsairs i think that'll be an interesting matchup as well as down at the bottom the fish and chips rivalry st louis at london london turning over their roster this season and st louis uh keeping a lot of their roster per usual it'll be interesting to see how those two match up with the new look london knights across the pond uh, you know, a lot of interesting matchups across the board. Um, you know, obviously the Florida matchup, very interesting as Mighty uh, chases Frank all the way into the lower peninsula. Um, it'll be interesting to see how those two square off. And again, that one could have a lot of playoff implications down the road. But to me, Chicago and Queen City is an important one for the Wildcats and an even bigger one for the Corsairs. We'll be breaking down all of the team schedules tonight and you'll get your team desktop wallpaper as soon as it's released. So uh, if you're trying to track your schedule feverishly as we go through the weeks, have no fear. Uh, we'll be uh, showcasing each team's schedule throughout the night. Week number three is headlined by the battle for Carolinas. Carolina hosts Charleston. Uh, those two met twice. Uh, last season in uh, Charleston's first season in the league, at least in South Carolina. Uh, some good games on the week three slate, including Jacksonville at Seattle, two teams that were in the semis last season but didn't get a chance to play. 
and Las Vegas' home opener against the now Florida Storm. And, of course, Las Vegas and uh, Max Paul have certainly had some duels uh, over the uh, first few seasons of Las Vegas' franchise. We start with Robert. Your Week 3 iconic matchup is... I think the matchup that stands out for me is the Baltimore at Denver game. Um, these are both two incredibly good teams, and the fact that they've never faced off in the SFL, I think, is just going to bring everybody eyes to it, just to you know see what this new matchup is about. Yeah, there's a couple of games on the slate, including as you mentioned, Baltimore and Denver, between two powerhouse teams that will be meeting for the first time. Phoenix, so what game would you like to touch on in Week Three? I like that Charleston-Carolina game. I think uh, the Carolinas were not a happy place last year combined. Both teams mustered just six wins. They're both going to be looking to start strong. Both teams struggled, uh, averaging less than 19 points per game. Um, prompts the Skyhawks to bring in Logan Jack, so the, the former Pharaoh is going to bring his town there. Uh, they're going to want bragging rights. Neither one wants to lose and start the season, you know, possibly on, on the losing end against their, their in-state or Carolina rival, so that's going to be interesting. I think it'll be a physical game. Andy, what's your think about week three? Well, I, uh, I'm i going to uh, go back to um, a, a top matchup, but to start, I think Mexico City at Atlanta will be very interesting. Two playoff teams from last season. Mexico City, after the, the uh, departure of Stephen Mullinex, will have to kind of regroup that offense, and obviously Ramos, a veteran coordinator, will know what he's doing. And Atlanta building off of a year last year that really propelled them into the conversation of tough teams. Can they keep up that pace? They're going to be challenged here in week three um, playing in Atlanta, but it should be a good matchup between those two. But the matchup for me in week three is also Charleston and Carolina. And Cam, I'm going to make a uh, bold assumption or a bold prediction here. I think Carolina has the opportunity to come into this week three game at 2-0. and oh. They have Two opponents in the first two weeks with a combined five wins and 19 losses. So the opportunity is there for the Carolina Skyhawks, who kept a lot of their important pieces as well as gained Logan Jack. Um, a, a good opportunity for them here to play their home opener against Charleston, potentially with an unblemished record. And I think the Carolina Skyhawks might stand up to the challenge and Boy, that uh, uh, stadium in Raleigh could be rocking if this Carolina Skyhawks team can hold through the first two weeks. Jonathan, round us out. Week three. Um, I can't remember exactly who said it, but Baltimore and Denver is definitely going to be one to circle. As both of those teams proved themselves last year, obviously Denver with the SFL championship, but Baltimore is also up there in contention as one of some of the best teams in the SFL. And I think that game going to be a prove it to see where they fall in the totem pole you know, in power rankings, which one of them is, see, Baltimore takes a step to be better than Denver this year, Denver holds its place. Um, but the other game outside of that, I think, is going to be Houston-Chicago, because Chicago last year showed that they were they were a legit team. They had some struggles a little later on the season, but I think that they're still going to be a team to beat this year, and I want to I want to see if Houston can finally get over the hump and finally become a, uh, you know, the, a team a team to beat in the SFL, because last year, I really like the strides they're making. You know, they're they're getting some good quality wins and it looked like they're starting to piece things together and I want to see if you know, of course that playoff first I want to see if this is like the year they finally come out they have a chance to really get a good win here early on in the season that's the Wildcats home opener too they got to wait till week three this year uh, and they'll host the team that knocked them out of the playoffs week number four looks like this headlined by a boy this game has all sorts of storylines Reggie Streeter goes to New Orleans after running for 425 yards against New Orleans last season. He goes now to London to take on Angus McLean, who moved over from San Francisco and is now the quarterback and the GM of the retooling Knights, New Orleans, London. Shock full of storylines. That is your headliner in week number four, along with Vice Wars, Denver at Las Vegas, and Seattle at Florida as well. Some good matchups. Uh, litter the schedule there down below. We'll start with Phoenix this time. Week number four, what you want to talk about? Oh, we, we got to go Vice Wars for sure. Uh, I mean, Denver, Vegas, that, that's going to be a matchup uh, in the lights there in, in Vegas. Um, Vegas finished last season with a loss to the eventual champs, so they're going to start this game with their hands full, of course. 
Uh, Denver did struggle in this game last year. Um, it, was, it was one of their you know, third worst game, only scoring 17 points. Uh, and Josh Miller struggled a little bit, throwing six picks. That defense had his number. Um, so I, I think his leading receiver may have been wearing a different colored jersey that day. So he's going to look to play a little bit better this time. I honestly think he will. Um, I think he's going to have a strong game. Uh, Vegas has their hands full. All right, Andy, week four, what's it look like? Well, Seattle at Florida sticks out to me the most here. Uh, I mean, when a team ends your season on a walk-off touchdown, Cam, you think about that for the rest of the year. And for Max Paul, he's had an entire offseason to stew over the tyrants sending him home and, in theory, you know, potentially replacing his spot in that championship game. Um, I'm very interested to see what the Storm have for the Tyrants when they come to town in Week 4. But along with that, I would have to say uh, that Mexico City and Jacksonville game will be very interesting in Florida to see how the uh, Mexico City Aztecs take on the Kings in Jacksonville um, and how that goes down. I mean, it, it's just so far, Cam, through four weeks, tons of heavy-hitting battles um, at the top of the top of the table. Yeah, week four slate may be the best. You got the uh, the playoff rematches between Mexico City, Jacksonville, Atlanta, Baltimore, Seattle, Florida, Vice Wars, the New Orleans and London tales. Jonathan, uh, how do you think week four stacks up? You've seen them all, no spoilers. Well, uh, obviously as a member of the Las Vegas figure free, I have Denver Vegas circle because every time the two of them play, it always gets it always gets heated. You know, last year they. Uh, the second time they played, they had a we had a very good chance. I'm just gonna say we. I'm not gonna hide my loyalties here. We had a really great chance of beating Denver. We actually had uh, their quarterback Josh Miller on the ropes one of the few times in his career. If you watched the season last year, he there were not many times he was uncomfortable. You know, he had an extremely low interception rate, but that game, the Vegas secondary was able to pick him off. I think a total of three or four times, and uh, that doesn't happen often. I think that just is attributed to the Vegas secondary definitely being one of the best in the league. Both Max Jackson, myself, Thomas Roman Jr. It's a hard way to you know pass the ball over. So that game's going to be a must see. It's going to definitely show where Vegas is on the totem pole of teams. You know, between Denver, if they're able to get the win with them. I think it'll definitely shoot them up because last year they were just a few pieces away from really putting it together. But otherwise, from that, New Orleans London is going to be good. Um, you know, London they had some they had some problems this off season. You know, DeAndre Washington. I haven't seen him in the chats or anything. I don't know where he's been. But, uh, you know, being the defense rookie of the year, um, I didn't see if he signed or anything. I may be signed wrong. Signed in Arizona, but very quietly. Signed. Yeah, very quiet. So I, I didn't even know that, but they lost him, which is just a detriment, I'm sure, to them. I'm sure they that probably, I don't know if that came out of the blue during the season or what, but that uh, that's going to be a loss, especially with this running back the Pharaohs have now. You know, that's going to be a problem during the game. And we're just going to see if McLean can finally can get it together in London. It's going to be rough, but, I mean, I guess we'll find out. Robert, uh, round out week four for us. I mean, uh, much like Jonathan, I'm going to kind of play Homer here, but I obviously have uh, New Orleans at London Circle. Um, obviously, the, the major storylines, as you said, is Streeter coming in and um, now playing for the team that he had a record day against. Um, but not only that, it's just uh, as we speak currently, you know, there's a lot of question marks surrounding the defense of London, you know, who's going to be there and things like that. So just to see what kind of uh, defense London will be able to build to eventually, you know, try to stop Reggie Streeter. And the offense that has been built so far appears that it should be a fairly deadly uh, offense to be able to score a bunch of points. So just to see what New Orleans can do against that defensively. All right, week number five, we'll go into a bit of a lightning round here as uh, we try to move the schedule along. It is headlined by Vancouver and Seattle meeting for the first time up in the great Northwest. Vancouver will host that game. Florida also takes on Atlanta, giving new meaning to that rivalry between the Storm and the Swarm. Uh, Chicago goes to Arizona, among other matchups. Andy, your thoughts on week five obviously the vancouver game probably sticks out pretty good um yeah it, it's always interesting to meet someone for the first time you know you get the butterflies in your stomach think about going in for a kiss but no no maybe not you know uh 
<laughs> but uh, standing out on the, I thought I shouldn't make that joke. Then I, I went ahead and did it. Was it was great. Um, I liked it. Good change of pace. Uh, well, uh, it was something. Um, <laughs> I think Las Vegas and St. Louis sticks out for me the most. Both those teams had down years last year. Both have had some opportunities in this season 14 schedule release so far to kind of stand up to some of those bigger teams. But this, for both of those teams, will probably be the first must win for their seasons. Um, you know, a lot of times when you're coming off a season like Las Vegas or St. Louis had last year, you kind of worry about winning those big games. But really, you need to worry about winning some of these games where you're playing even match or slightly worse opponents um, because if you lose those games, it can really be a kick to the stomach for your entire season. So I'm very interested to see who comes out with the will to win more in that game. Week five, Jonathan, what you looking at? Man, you know, I'm, I'm feeling an upset, man. I'm feeling it, and I'm feeling it out there in Denver. I'm feeling Queen City genuinely has a chance to go in there and pull it over Denver's heads because I think this is going to be a game that Denver's not like really thinking about. It's week five. You're playing Queen City. I mean, you should win, right? You should beat Queen City. You're Denver. You're the reigning champs. But I think this is just a trap game. I think this is just one of those games that's kind of mid or early in the season. And even you just overlook an opponent that's way better than you think they are. So that's a game I have circled for, you know, a possible upset. Especially the way Denver starts their season. From week five to week six, we start with Robert, headlined by Jacksonville and Sioux Falls. The Kings 0-3, surprisingly, against the Sparrows. They will host them in the first of two meetings this season. Vegas goes to Seattle. Chicago goes to Florida, among other matchups. Uh, Robert, where does your eye go in week six? Yeah, my eye would have to go to the Sioux Falls at Jacksonville game. Um, you know, Jacksonville's going to be looking to get over that hump. Uh, it gets really tough once you haven't been able to beat a team multiple times. And the fact that, you know, if they happen to lose this game, they might have a rebound later in the season. Uh, it's got to look good for them, but they're looking to finally get a win in that game. Phoenix, what you want to take a look at in week six? I'm going to be concerned for the quarterbacks, and I'll tell you why in, in which game. The Las Vegas-Seattle game, They uh, those two defenses boast last year's sack leaders, 20 and a half each. Uh, the Tyrants and the Fury, they, their quarterbacks are going to be running their lives. That's going to be fun to watch. From week six to week seven as the calendar turns to the second half of the season. Headlined by a rivalry renewed between St. Louis and Chicago. Also, Baltimore goes to Jacksonville. It's always competitive when those two teams take, uh, take each other on. And Mexico City is at Queen City. Lots of big names in that game. The logo, Chris Curtis, Stephen Hacker, uh, Ray Bentley, Matt Wilson, they're all over the field in that matchup, uh, along with seven others, as we will have every week this season. Ten weeks, or I'm sorry, ten games per 12 weeks. No buys on the winter 2020 schedule. Andy, week seven headliner for you is? Well, I, I would have to say that Mexico City and Queen City game stands out to me to be very interesting. But also Atlanta at Seattle will be a very good litmus test for Atlanta and the Swarm to see are they pretenders or contenders this season if they can head up to the pacific northwest and beat the tyrants that would be a big showing for the atlanta swarm who has slowly been building their team and their roster and uh you know this could be the year that they try and make a run cam all right jonathan your week seven headliner i think honestly uh it's gonna be it's gonna be carolina and london I think these two teams are going to be extremely comparable roster-wise this year, and I'm really, I'm really excited to see Soli, you know, uh, takes takes the step in the right direction. Um, because last year, near, especially near the end of the season, I was really liking the way that that, that offense was taking shape. Uh, the coordinator there, I, I like him as a person. I think he's, I think he's going to really get into shape with the QB. I think it's all going to come together. I think this is going to be the game to honestly tell everyone where their season's at. I think this is going to be their season-defining game this week, at least, will be their season-defining week. And that's a great point because uh, even though Sully Richardson was the only uh, was one of two quarterbacks taken in the draft, the only one that's currently signed uh, with the team right now, Angus McLean came on in the middle of the season and actually played quite well for San Francisco. So two young or old, depending upon how you look at them, quarterbacks uh, on the field will uh, will take shape, and that's going to be a very good ball game, London and Carolina in Week Seven. 
All right, Robert, get us started on week eight, headlined by Arizona and Vegas. A new rivalry out in the desert, along with Atlanta and Chicago, a battle between two great friends and Sioux Falls and Baltimore. And we all remember how Sioux Falls was able to shock the world in primetime against the Vultures last season. Uh, what game would you like to touch on in week eight? I mean, uh, for week eight, I, I would definitely have to touch on Arizona at Las Vegas. Um, this looks to be just two powerhouse defenses going head to head. Arizona adding uh, DeAndre Washington, and as we touched on, and just everything that Vegas has. I, I think it, it's probably going to be a low scoring game, and uh, whoever holds the ball longest is probably going to win that game. Phoenix, what are your thoughts on the week eight slate? I have the same exact uh, analysis as, as Robert did. Does uh, uh, Arizona Vegas is going to be exciting? A battle in the desert. Um, Vegas struggled last year putting points up. As we all know, Eddie Gates is great calling a defensive game plan. That it is going to be a 10-7, a, a 13-7 game, something like that. It'll be close. Week number nine of the season sees the second time Denver and Seattle will play each other this season. A championship rematch part two as the Nightwings host the Tyrants in the uh, beautiful Richard L. Snowden Memorial Stadium where they won the title. Chicago is at Houston in the second meeting between those two teams this season. And Sioux Falls goes to London, two teams that finished five and seven last year and just on the outside looking into the playoffs so late in the season. That game could be huge. Andy, your thoughts on the week nine slate? Yeah, I think it's, if I got to give the nod to one game, it's that Sioux Falls and London game. Very important for both of those teams to get the win there. Um, and, and, you know, it could be a proving point for either of one of them to show that, you know, hey, this season is the real deal for us. But I also obviously have to circle the Jacksonville-Vancouver game. Uh, you know, Vancouver has struggled in matchups between Jacksonville and Tallahassee prior uh, in prior years. Um, but it'll be interesting to see in Vancouver how that one goes. I believe both other times that they've played have been in uh, Tallahassee. Yeah, the, unless I'm misremembering, there was one time in some heavy rain that Tallahassee came up to Vancouver, but I think you're right. Most of the meetings have come down there in Florida. All right, Jonathan, week nine look. Uh, what do you think? Well, I guess I'll, I'll talk about Seattle and Denver, you know, um, this would be a really big game if Seattle would be able to pull this off. They'd go into Denver and win, and that, that'd obviously be quite the achievement to pull off, but should it happen, I mean, that would probably change. The, I'm assuming at this point they're probably still, of course, an above 500 team, but that would definitely cement them as a team to beat. Um, but that'd be rough. <laughs> that'd be a really hard thing to do. I still want to see it happen. Um, I still want to watch that game. But outside of, the, obviously, the main headliner, I think that... I think that the St. Louis Atlanta game would be extremely competitive. Um, you know, I just think once again, it's two teams that have that that it end up being an extremely competitive duel. You know, because some of the games that you see is just they're competitive, not necessarily based on the fact that uh, where they stand on the season, but just the way their rosters are set up. I think that one would be underrated. Is the best way to put it. Low key, Baltimore at New Orleans for the first time. The only other time they've ever met was in that wild playoff game where the Vultures put up 62 points back in the winter 2019 season. And that might not be the only time those two teams face off this year. That's a look at week nine. Week 10 headlined by uh, the bright green taking on one another once more where Mark Chisholm got his start. Atlanta going to Queen City. Late in the season, that game undoubtedly uh, will mean some things. Five of the eight times they've met, uh, the result has uh, ended up in sing uh, by uh, one possession. Chicago is at Denver. Uh, those two teams played a nail-biter a couple of seasons ago, and Vancouver goes to Houston. Those two teams are always in the mix. Robert, a look at Week 10. What do you think of it? Um, I mean, Week 10 is going to be a, a very solid week for the SFL, but one game I, I focus in on in particular um, would be the Sioux Falls at Seattle game. Um, this past season, Sioux Falls and Seattle played, and Seattle just blew them out of the water. Um, it's a game I remember well. That was the only game I scored a touchdown in last season. With that said, you know, I think Sioux Falls is looking for redemption, looking for their shot to prove that they can beat Seattle. Phoenix, uh, 
And I hope you're not going to talk about London and Jacksonville because I want to remind everyone how crazy that game was last year as Ken, as uh, uh, Jacksonville suffered an injury and still able to pull out the game. I think Gossett was out of that one. Either way, it was an awesome ball game. Those two teams will square off again in Week 10. What else is on your mind in Week 10? I got to land at, at uh, Queen City. I think that's going to be a... Uh... That's going to be a, some fireworks. The the offensive power that Atlanta boasts is impressive. Uh, they had the uh, leading passer last year in the SFL. I, I, I just think he's going to repeat the same kind of performance that he had last year. Uh, like you mentioned, Chisholm is going to be matched up against his former team. And, and Queen City has, has something to prove from last year. They're a very sto- historic and proud franchise. They struggled uh, with five wins last year. They're, they're not going to tolerate that in that neck of the woods. So they're going to look to uh, have a strong season. That's going to be a fun game to watch. Robert, Doug Day in the chat said that uh, him and you have the same amount of touchdowns and he's a linebacker. You want to say anything to that? Yeah, I'm uh, planning to improve on that this season uh, strongly. You know, I got Angus uh, throwing me the ball now. It's going to be difficult sharing with uh, Gabriel Manning and everything, but I think we're going to get my numbers up. Why do, why do I have a feeling, Andy, that Robert is slowly plotting his revenge and trying to keep it civil at the moment? Yeah, that was the calmest reaction <laughs> to someone ever taking a shot at you I've ever heard in my entire life. That was amazing. Watch out, Doug. He's coming to your neighborhood. Watch Week out. 11, He's going to improve. Florida hosts Baltimore. That's going to be a huge game down the stretch as those two, those two teams know each other quite well. Uh, Florida got the best of Baltimore in the regular season last season. Denver plays Vancouver. That game is always close. Houston and London, that game is always close. Those two have come down to the wire, and that matchup was the inaugural uh, matchup on uh, television last year and finds itself in Week 11. Andy, what uh, what's this week look like to you next to the last week before the playoffs will start uh well i'm just blinded by baltimore and florida at the top of the page for a week 11 matchup i mean that's insane for both of those teams and with the playoffs looming i mean that could be a make or break game for one of those teams cam depending on how the rest of their season goes i mean could be very important for seeding home field advantage i mean the rest of the schedule i can't even see it's just a blur with that huge game lingering on that first uh line all right jonathan week 11 what you think i'm definitely looking at the uh las vegas arizona game those are two teams that have extremely good good odds of making the playoffs i think it's gonna end up being a game that either affects seeding or their place at all in the playoffs so that's definitely one that obviously i'm gonna be watching since i'm on the team but i think would end up being extremely important and that's the second meeting between those two rivals in the desert last week of the season who knows what's going to end up being the biggest game on the slate but six playoff teams from last year's 10 will play each other at least denver at jacksonville Florida at Mexico City and Houston at Seattle to round out week 12. Also the final games uh, for the rest of the league, Arizona at Queen City, Atlanta at Las Vegas, London at Chicago, New Orleans at Baltimore, St. Louis at Carolina, Tulsa at Charleston, Vancouver at Sioux Falls. Four of those are rematches from games earlier in the season. Robert, round out week 12 for us. You know, I, I think I got to look at the New Orleans at Baltimore matchup. Um, both these teams appear to have uh, really good teams this season, obviously with New, New Orleans adding Streeter. Um, but I think this could be a, a matchup that really decides seeding and, you know, where these guys may play in the playoffs this, this uh, offseason or postseason rather. Phoenix, last word on the weekly slates before we get to the team schedules. Denver, Jacksonville for sure. Uh, two teams combined for 20 wins last year. Uh, Jacksonville uh, moved from Tallahassee, and th- those fans are going to be excited to see the defending champs show up. That's going to be a ball game. All right, first we're going to break down the defending champions' schedules. Uh, it's the Denver Nightwings, and this is what their team schedule looks like. They will host Florida. They will finish the season on a two-game road trip, and they have a couple of two-game road trips this season. We start uh, with Andy looking at the Denver schedule as a whole. It is quite challenging, including the first six games. 
uh, that include a three-time champion, a four-time champion, a champion, the team they played in the championship game last season, and Baltimore and Vegas. Yeah, and those first three games really stick out to me. I mean, talk about just getting hit in the face with a brick to start your winter 2020 season. I mean, for me, Cam, when I look across this schedule, there's a lot of very tough games here, but a lot of games where Denver is going to really find out what kind of team they have this season. If they can make it through those first three games, you know, even just two and one, I mean, that, that would be a huge moral victory for the Denver Nightwings because there's a lot of punching power in those top teams you know it gets a little bit easier starting in week seven um, but then you have seattle in week nine chicago in week 10 and jacksonville in your final week i mean denver can't really take their foot off the pedal jeremy vega in the chat was talking about how the schedule might make uh him want to come out of retirement to coach this team and i mean cam looking at this schedule he might need to all right, uh, how about uh, Jonathan's analysis of the Night Wings? Oh, did we lose Jonathan? We may have lost him. Let's go to Robert. Yeah, kind of like Andy said, you know, Denver just can't take their foot off the gas at any point this season. Um, I mean, just Florida, Seattle, and Baltimore back to back to back, really, really tough schedule. And then you, you still got Las Vegas and Queen City, and then obviously you got to go up against the defending MVP and Offensive Player of the Year. I mean, there's there's nothing bad about this schedule. It's just going to be great football for them all season. All right, next up, we're going to take a look at the team that uh, failed to uh, win the title but got all the way there, probably exceeded many's expectations, the Seattle Tyrants. And they will start the road at home, but finish up at home. Uh, they only play, uh, they play two road games in a row twice. Um, and uh, going to be doing some traveling. Uh, they, go to, uh, they go to Baltimore, they go to Florida, um, and they go to uh, St. Louis and Chicago as well out in the Midwest. Andy, back to you. What do you think of this Seattle team? Very heavy front four games. I mean, the top 30 year schedule is playoff teams and contenders right there. Baltimore, Denver, Jacksonville, and Florida. Um, then your last eight games get a little bit easier. Three or four contenders in that mix from last season, um, if you're including Houston. Uh, so, you know, really for Seattle, this isn't the worst schedule that they could have drawn. They just have to fight through those first four weeks. If you can get out of there at two and two, you feel really confident about that back eight of your schedule. So, Cam, Seattle draws a, a, a decent schedule here, in my opinion. Phoenix, what do you think of the Tyrants' uh, schedule this season? I agree that those first four games are going to be key. If they can uh, they can hold their own in their first four uh, and you know, hold serve the last eight. They should uh, once again find themselves in the middle of the playoffs. But the uh, the first four games, boy, oh boy, that's going to be tough. All right, uh, Sham Varner is all over it in the chat. He wants Chicago, and we're going to give him Chicago, and Jonathan will break it down for us. This is the Chicago Wildcats schedule. A quirky schedule, certainly. They play two games on the road, then two games at home all season long, finishing up with home stands against Seattle, and London. Jonathan, the Chicago Wildcats schedule, how do you see it? You know, I think uh, overall, the first four weeks are extremely manageable. Um, they should at least, at the very least, if they can come out of that two and two in the first four games. But, you know, after that, it, it definitely uh, it definitely picks up. Because I'm actually big on the Wildcats. They're one of my favorite teams in the offseason. They were picked to be one of my teams. I think that should go far. Um, but the more I like the schedule, like, they got to play Arizona, and then they got to play. They got to play at Florida, and then they got to go to play. And then they got to play at Denver, and then they got to play Seattle. Like, I don't see those as being games that are like. I mean, they can win them. I'm gonna give everyone a chance. I'm never gonna say you're out of a game, but those games are gonna be extremely hard, especially the three that are on the road there: Arizona, Florida, uh, week five and six, and then week ten at Denver. That's gonna be actually, actually gonna be extremely good. I, I don't. I, that's gonna be really hard. They have a game plan extremely well against those teams. You know, St. Louis, that should be a win. I'm, I don't like guaranteeing wins, but that should be a win in St. Louis. Atlanta's going to be a game. I think Houston's going to be a game because I think Houston's going to surprise people. 
London's going to be a game, but then the games they got to play against, you know, they got to they have to beat Seattle. They have to beat Denver. That's like the hardest part is actually winning those games because I just I don't know if they have the roster to stack up against them. I'm I'm never their coaches might have an excellent game plan. You know, they might call the right plays, put the right coverages in, but those those teams that they have to play against are like the beginning of midseason, near the end of the uh, last week of the season, that's going to be or last few weeks of the season is going to be really difficult. Andy, I see Chicago's schedule as probably one of the more uh, questionable schedules in terms of we don't really know what we're going to get out of a lot of their opponents. Houston lost some pieces. Tulsa lost some pieces. London lost some pieces. St. Louis has some new pieces they're playing with. Um, is I mean, is that just, just my impression of Chicago's schedule? Because th this could end up being a really, really, really difficult schedule or Chicago could catch some breaks. Yeah, I, I was going to swing the opposite of Jonathan. I think they're, you know, with those question marks in Houston, with the question marks in London, you know, you never know what you're going to get out of a St. Louis team, especially later in the season where they've shown some strength. Sioux Falls has shown some good seasons and some poor seasons in the past. Very interested to see what you get out of the Chicago Wildcats schedule. But to me, I think there's plenty of winnable games on this schedule, especially, um, you know, when you look at it in thirds, you know, the front three, I think they can definitely split that two and two, if not three and two. Uh, middle four games, I think there's at least two wins there as well. Um, you know, going to be a tough sled to either be Arizona, Atlanta, or Florida. Um, I think St. Louis is one that they've had success against in the past, but you can never really count them out. And then in the last four, I think that's when it gets a little more tricky there. Um, but to me, Cam, I think this Chicago team has shown time in and time out that they have the team to go up against the schedule that they have, no matter how difficult it can be. And despite that, like you said, a lot of question marks on this schedule. I think Shan Varner will have the Wildcats ready. And uh, really, you know, when you look at it straight down the middle, can you win your home games? And then can you win a couple on the road? I think Chicago can. And uh, I think the Wildcats will be back in the playoffs this season. Poor Doug's laying on his bladder. Let's get him Vancouver before uh, something terrible happens there. The Vancouver Legion will start and end the season on the road. They will play four out of five at home between week two and week six. And during that stretch, play just one playoff team. That's Seattle at home. Robert, how would you break down Vancouver's schedule? Yeah, I think Vancouver, they're like last eight games are going to be their their hardest games uh realistic they're at florida at las vegas um you know they got seattle at home and denver at home and uh those are just going to be some uh, games they're really going to struggle with um you know they got some breaks in there home against st louis uh, would look to be based off of last year's results be a, a win for them um and then you got your question marks going into uh, sioux falls at the end of the season going to Houston, even, you know, week three, uh, host in London. Uh, Doug, I'll be seeing you that week. Um, but all in all, you know, they should have a, a pretty solid season looking at this schedule. Well, that was even calmer than the first one, Andy. That really terrified me. Um, <laughs> I think I think it might be Robert's profile picture, too. That uh, there's, there's just something about it. Phoenix, uh, boy, I tell you, Vancouver, uh, they better weather... Uh, they, or they better get off to a fast start. That la Those last six games, can they weather that storm? No pun intended to the Week 8 matchup. You're absolutely right. I think uh, any anyone who's ever played any kind of sports, when the schedule's released, they immediately go to it and start circling the games that they think they can win, the games they think they might have struggled with. Um, no difference. With, with the Legion, they're gonna they're gonna have to start strong. Those first four games are winnable for sure. The last eight uh, get a little bit tougher, but uh, with so many roster positions opening up and so much movement and activity, you never really know how much a, a roster has improved year over year. So you can't take anything for granted. Um, Vancouver's schedule starts off lighter, it would look like, but uh, it definitely doesn't end that way. So hopefully, a good start for them gets them through. I see the Kapows in the chat. That means it must be time for Sioux Falls' uh, team schedule next. Andy, we'll start with you. They finished with two at home after a three-game road trip. Only a few of those 
uh, in the SFL this season at Baltimore on the East Coast, at London, way out uh, uh, across the pond, and then at Seattle out west. So I'm going to rack up some miles there in the, uh, in the month of March. Yeah, for sure. Two, uh, two playoff teams per third of the schedule, Houston, Chicago in the front four. Uh, you know, you have the Arizona in there as well, who you never really know what you're going to get out of them um, being a first season uh, under Eddie Gage. Um, you got Jacksonville and Baltimore in that second third, and then Seattle and Jacksonville in the final third. So really, you know, you're looking at potentially having to split two and two every single third if you can't pull out some uh, some upsets. So for Sioux, or, uh, yeah, for Sioux Falls, excuse me, this is a, an interesting schedule, especially when you have teams like Arizona, teams like Queen City, teams like Charleston, who could potentially start to turn their tide and pick their uh, teams up from where they were last year and play better. Um, I'm interested to see how the Sparrows bounce back from a year where they didn't necessarily perform how I'm sure they would have liked. I know uh, AJ Levy is in the chat um, talking it up and getting everyone involved, and I'm interested to see how he talks up and gets this defense going against some of the top opponents in the SFL this year. All right, who's next? Waiting on the chat to take me to my next direction here as we finish breaking down Sioux Falls. That Sioux Falls Queen City game in week one is always good. There's New Orleans. New Orleans is first. Thank you, Xander Gold. We go to the Pharaohs of New Orleans. And New Orleans starts with two games at home. They will finish with two games on the road. Uh, there they have a three game homestand between week eight and week 10. Uh, Charleston, Baltimore, and Mexico City on uh, that slate of home games. They play Charleston twice and Baltimore twice in the last five weeks. So uh, probably the most unique end to a schedule of any team this season. Jonathan, how do you see New Orleans breaking down? You know, I think judging uh, especially from the schedule that this is gonna be a huge, huge year for New Orleans. I think those first four weeks is, is some of the best first four weeks any team's been not given. I think that's going to be definitely time for them to gain momentum as a team, get some good wins, and then the next week, the next four weeks after that, don't don't look much much more hard, much harder. You know, Houston could be a game, but they, I think they should beat Houston. Charleston could it could end up being somewhat close, but I think they should beat Charleston, especially whenever they're playing them at home. You know, the, Jacksonville, Baltimore. When they play them, when they play Baltimore twice, I think Jacksonville. Those three games are going to end up being extremely difficult, or at least. Uh, a much a much bigger challenge in the previous weeks before those games, but otherwise, I, th I think they should be a playoff team. Judging from this from the schedule, I think that they should be able to get enough wins to make the playoffs. So Jonathan's predicting playoffs out of New Orleans. Eddie Gage in the chat earlier was predicting playoffs out of Vancouver. Tons of Jacksonville in the chat. That's where we'll go next. The Jacksonville Kings moving more east in the state of Florida. Finish the season at home again, uh, finish and start the season, I should say, at home against playoff opponents. Take on Sioux Falls twice. That's the only team they play twice. Plus, at Florida and at Seattle in back-to-back -back weeks. Let's go over to Robert, break down the Jacksonville Kings schedule for us. Sorry, I could not find the schedule. Um, yeah, Jacksonville seems to have a, a pretty tough first four games, especially. Uh, you, you know, they first get Atlanta at home, but then they got to go at to Florida. They got to go to Seattle. They got to host Mexico City, which again, you know, playing any team that has an MVP and an offensive player of the year, it, it's never an easy task. Um, you know, the defensive coordinator is really going to have to prepare for that one. And then the last eight weeks they don't i wouldn't say they get any easier but you have a lot more chances um you know hosting sioux falls going to houston um the game against london and then obviously it's going to be a struggle week 12 they should know where they stand at that point but playing denver is not an easy task especially if you know they're on the outside looking in or denver is doing the same all right, where we're we going next, Cheeseburger Rivers, a Pro Bowl, a Pro Bowler, I should say, for the first time. Congratulations, uh, Rivers. Uh, 
let's go to St. Louis. They have the number one pick this season in the draft. You can watch the draft Saturday, December 14th, live on FTF on all the usual platforms. St. Louis begins and ends the season with Carolina. It's the only matchup on the schedule that features uh, a rematch from the beginning and the end of the season. So Carolina and St. Louis will do battle twice after they did not meet um, at all last year. Phoenix, how do you see St. Louis's schedule playing out? Well, they're definitely gonna have to start strong. Um, both uh, Carolina and St. Louis, uh, as we mentioned earlier, struggled a little bit last year. It's gonna be a, a battle of the number one and number two overall picks um, at the beginning of the season and at the end. Uh, hopefully that last game uh, is not an irrelevant game. In other words, hopefully both teams are still fighting for something. Um, it's going to be exciting to see some of the future rookies uh, battle it out at least twice. Um, that first, those first four are winnable um, if they play. Um, it's, it's about game planning. They might have some struggles with the Pharaohs, of course, in the, in the new running attack. But it's a manageable schedule. Um, I would be hesitant to, to predict more than you know five or six wins for the year but uh, five or six is more than, than, than the two they had last year and if I remember correctly I think uh, maybe four or six is their all-time high so uh, they have the potential to maybe reach a new high maybe maybe five or six wins they gotta start strong I see you Teflon Ron let's go to Baltimore the Vultures schedule features home games at the front and the back uh, they've got uh, Four out of six on the road between weeks two through seven, and three of those games are on the road against playoff teams. Andy, what do you think of Baltimore's schedule with New Orleans twice down the stretch? They got seven playoff teams in this schedule, Cam, if I'm doing my math correctly, and that is uh, qu quite a bit for a 12-game 12, uh, 12 season. New Orleans twice will definitely help depending on how the Pharaohs play. If they come out and start firing, this could get really interesting for the Baltimore Vultures and really test um, how good of a coach T-Pat as well as um, TJ are to really put this team where they need to be. Um, you know, you start out with just a real heavy hitter brick to the face. Five teams uh, in Seattle, Mexico City, Denver, and Atlanta, as well as Houston, who really... Um, can cause some issues for you. You get a one-week break with Charleston, even though that team has shown some signs of life uh, in the past and could start bringing it this season. And then you get Jacksonville, Sioux Falls. So really, you know, there's no days off for Baltimore this season. They're really going to have to put pedal to the metal and uh, grind this season out. I I'm really interested to see, because I think this might be one of the tougher schedules Baltimore has had um, since rejoining the league. Tons of Atlanta in the chat. Jonathan will get the chance to break down the Swarm schedule next. And Atlanta will get two out of three at home to start the season. A critical uh, stretch there between weeks seven through 10. Three out of four on the road and uh, two of those road games against playoff opponents and also going up to Queen City, a big rivalry game for Atlanta. Uh, Jonathan, uh, what stands out to you on the Swarm schedule? I'm going to be completely honest with this. Uh, this is, I think, like one of the most brutal schedules we've seen. Weeks 1 through 8 are all ridiculous. That is, that is, I don't think, I don't think, I don't know if we've seen a team that has had that type of just eight straight weeks of, of, of torture. Like every single one of those teams has a has the potential of making the playoffs this year and not only that all these teams have potential to be even better than just playoff hopeful some of these teams are, are looking to be have dominant seasons you have to play at jacksonville vegas and mexico city and baltimore just in your first first four weeks those games alone are, could all go you could go zero and four in the first four weeks against those teams and just to go off those first four to go into florida arizona seattle and chicago those first eight weeks are going to be extremely detrimental. I don't even know if they can, hopefully they can break 500 would be my goal. If I was the head coach or GM for this team, those first, those first eight weeks, you're going to try to at least win four of them because you do get, it gets a little easier. You know, week nine, week 10 and 11, those are all games that, you know, you, you should win. Of course, years might get hard. That game you might drop to, but I think the Swarm should beat them. But then ending on Vegas, that game might end up being huge for them. 
that week 12 game might end up deciding whether or not they make the playoffs but overall like this this doesn't look great for their playoff chances it was just first eight weeks are so brutal yeesh and having those four uh those uh four rematches in week 12 also four rematches in week 11 could do a lot to the tiebreakers and which ones end up playing out maybe teams can get a sweep over another they split the series it could go in a totally different direction uh, so we'll have to keep a lookout uh, with those matchups including atlanta and vegas in week two and then the rematch in week 12 ashley jackson i've got you the arizona scorpions inaugural schedule looks like this at houston versus tulsa the two headliners at the front of it they do play queen city and vegas twice so two teams that were just on the outside looking in of the playoffs last season on the schedule um, including the row game to close things out at queen city so um robert arizona avoids having to go to buffalo in uh, january and february but we'll have to go to sioux falls in week three that could end up having some snow yeah it could definitely be a snowy game and you know arizona's schedule in general is pretty interesting um they're fairly spread out within their their home and away games um in fact looking at it it's just oh it's almost every other week for them uh being on the road and home um but you know this this team obviously being a, a new team has some question marks but with the defense that that they have and with eddie gage at the helm um you know they could end up being a, a really good team this year um taking on las vegas twice is going to be tough for them especially with the the desert uh feud that they're going to have going on and you know playing buffalo uh or queen city twice once in buffalo it's going to be a tough game um but they're going to have a, a fun schedule it's going to be fun to follow them yeah just the one two game homestand in week four and week five with queen city and chicago back to back all right who else hasn't but that there's jack brown up at the top well let's get to charleston and let's go over to phoenix to break down the predators schedule with the blood in the water charleston finishes with two games at home include and then uh, also open up the season at home which means they are one of the few teams that has a three-game road trip at new orleans at mexico city at florida week 10 that's after hosting playoff teams baltimore and houston at home so a tough middle of the schedule for the predators uh, phoenix how do you uh see this schedule shaping out for chs well, you nailed the cam. The uh, that middle of the schedule is brutal. Um, they uh, Charleston hopefully starts strong. They they have some potential for wins in, in the early part of the schedule. Two teams there only two wins last year each. Uh, Vancouver, of course, will be tough. Uh, London, you never know um, with all the movement. But that middle stretch, you you mentioned it. Um, the Pharaohs on the road, the Aztecs in Mexico City with the altitude, they then come right back and have to fight a storm in florida that's tough all right uh andy where are we going next um let us go to the london knights the london knights let's take a look at what london's got going on across the pond they do not have they only have one homestand at week eight versus queen city week nine versus sioux falls they will begin and end the season on the road uh but uh, london couple of international road trips at vancouver week three at mexico city week five otherwise mostly stay on the east coast what do you think about london andy yeah well uh, angus mclean and the new crew over in london better have their passports ready uh for this season they're gonna have a, a lot of interesting battles on their hands charleston could be an interesting matchup for them as excuse me as well as queen city um sioux falls could also be an interesting game for them but to me, Cam, I, I see a lot of opportunity here in the first eight games of this schedule. You get some tough teams in there, like uh, Mexico City, like Queen City, uh, but you do have some teams like St. Louis, who you're very used to seeing. You also have some teams like Tulsa, who are also rebuilding their roster after a little bit of turnover. So 
I'm interested to see what they do in those first eight weeks because then coming in those last four, they do have Jacksonville and Chicago both on the road. Um, you know, you can't expect to win both of those games. Maybe you can escape with one of them. Uh, but in reality, those first eight weeks are going to determine where you are in the playoff conversation. If you can win more than 50% of those games, you might be in good shape come that fourth uh, or that third um, set of four games in the schedule. Yeah, those last four, London has played some nail biters uh, down the stretch, and it's going to be interesting to see where they're at by the time they get to week number nine. All right, bouncing around the league, let's go to Florida. The Florida Storm playing their first season in Fort Lauderdale. The Storm will be at Denver. Uh, they have two back-to-back uh, -back home games once, week 10 and week 11. We'll finish at Mexico City. A couple of big rivalry games to end the schedule and also uh, some tough road games at Vegas, at Arizona, at Atlanta. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough road trip uh, there for Florida. So, Jonathan, how do you... Uh, how do you see the storm uh, this season uh, navigating through the SFL and trying to get back to that championship game that uh, was, was almost kind of odd to not see them there this past year? Yeah, you know, I, I think that honestly, their first seven weeks are going to decide their season. This kind of makes me think a lot of the swarm, except they just don't have nearly as hard of a last four games. But weeks one through seven are definitely going to be difficult. They're going to want to try to escape that, you know, with, with definitely a win uh, over their losses. Because week eight, weeks eight through twelve really aren't that difficult. Outside of week eleven versus Baltimore, they should win those games. I don't like giving games to teams, but just just looking at this, they should win eight through twelve uh, at least, you know, four to one. But those first seven weeks are definitely going to decide their season. You know, that's that's a rough stretch. Beginning. Robert, where do you want to go to? Who have we not seen yet? Ray Bentley with the twenty five hundred bits. Shout out to you, sir. Um. Have we looked at uh, Carolina yet? I can't quite remember. We've not looked at Carolina yet. Let's go to the Skyhawks. Carolina with a two-game road trip to start. Most teams don't have two road games in a row. Chicago is the only other team I can think of off the top of my head that uh, that starts with two on the road. They will finish at home against St. Louis. We touched on uh, that uh, matchup between those two already. So, uh, Robert, uh, what do you think when you look at Carolina's schedule? You know, looking at Carolina's schedule, I, I think they have a, a pretty well-balanced schedule. Um, their difficult games are kind of evened out and spread apart well enough for them to prepare. Um, another thing that I'd like to, to say um, is that week one matchup at St. Louis. You know, I don't think it's as detrimental to Carolina to win that game as it would be for St. Louis. Um, I think Carolina has a better chance to kind of rebound off of that. Um, uh, playing New Orleans at New Orleans would be rough, but and they got Charleston and Vancouver, uh, even going into Tulsa. Um, but their last five games, um, three out of the five, or, or even four out of the five, are pretty rough. Uh, host in Denver, then going to Arizona, then host in Vegas, and going back into Atlanta. Um, so I think those, those five games there, uh, including that last home game against St. Louis, could really tell you who this team is kind of show you where they're at and how they're going to finish off their season phoenix let's go to houston where the hyenas will host arizona in week one finish the season with two on the road at london and at seattle but that's after they have a rare three-game homestand against jacksonville chicago and vancouver what stands out to you on the hyenas slate I think they're going to need two of the games that you just mentioned there. Uh, the Kings, Wildcats, and, and Vancouver, three very good teams. I don't expect them to, to be anything less than what they were last year. Very competitive uh, playoff teams. Seattle at the end is going to be tough. Um, I, I only think they got better, so if, if they made it to the finals, uh, they had some pickups this year in the offseason to, to make them even better. They're going to have to, they're going to, have to you know, scrap up some wins in the beginning there, and then the middle, I mean, Baltimore in the middle. In Baltimore, that's a rough crowd. Um, Jacksonville is going to be difficult, and then Seattle. But this, they're going to, they're going to struggle to get uh, double-digit wins. That's it'll be very tough. I, I seem somewhere in the middle of the pack. 
Andy, new coach in Vegas, Stephen Mullinex, now the offensive coordinator. And with that defense, Vegas is on paper an early uh, contender to go from uh, the couch to the postseason this year. But they do start with two on the road as well at Mexico City, at Atlanta. A tough stretch early, um, an interesting stretch late. Uh, how would you see Vegas's schedule breaking down? Um, I think it's tough, Cam. I, when I really look at this front four, I mean, just to get past that, if you can win two of those games, you have started out way um, better than what you put on paper last season. And with Stephen Mullinex, you would kind of expect to. Um, then in your next four, it doesn't necessarily get any easier with Seattle and Arizona on your schedule. And then going into the final four, you get a little bit of a break with Arizona and then Atlanta at the end. Uh, but in reality, Cam, I mean, this is going to be tough week in and week out for this Fury team. Stephen Mullinex definitely has his work cut out for him to help this Las Vegas team. Um, you know, I'm interested to see. I think, you know, we're looking at six and six, maybe seven and five, if you can pull off a couple of upsets. Bentley's in the chat. Let's go to Mexico City. Jonathan Taylor, Sconsing. Uh, you'll see the Aztecs in week one. Mexico City will take on Tulsa twice this year, and they have four of five on the road, including three of those four road games against playoff opponents, Atlanta, Jacksonville, and Denver. What stands out to you on the Aztecs schedule? Well, you know, with week one already being a guaranteed L, you know, it's really <laughs> interesting to see how they handle that going into week two versus Baltimore. It's going to be a very difficult game. Um, you know, just just in general, those first two weeks are definitely going to be tone setters for the rest of the season. It's going to if they lose those two games, you know, it'd be really difficult, I think, to rebound from that, especially when you got to play Atlanta and Jacksonville afterwards. But you know, those first two are definitely going to mean a lot, especially when you're playing at home before you have to go on the road to Atlanta and Jacksonville. Uh, it's just going to be important. Besides that, you know, London, that's a game they should win. But then Denver's going to be difficult. But after that, now that I look at it, I think it's going to end up being pretty easier after that. After week six, I think they definitely have a chance at making a push for week 12. So all in all, I think week 12 might end up might end up becoming where the season's decided at. But this is going to be a rough first stretch, which seems like all these teams have been getting a rough first stretch. When you guys have really been setting this up to fail, haven't you? <laughs> Making everyone feel like they're going to lose. Everything going to go fix Play the first Playoff stretch. teams get it rough, baby. Uh, they uh, they got to they gotta go out and prove it wasn't a fluke. Two teams left. Let's go to Queen City first. Uh, Robert, uh, the Corsairs get two to start at home, uh, and then they end the season at home. That means they got a three-game road trip, weeks three through five, and all of them are against playoff caliber teams. You've got uh, Tulsa, who made the playoffs. Arizona didn't make the playoffs, but Eddie Gage's defense sure was playoff worthy last year and then at the defending champions as well that is about as rough of a road trip as any team has this season yeah like you said that that three day three game road stretch is really going to show who the corsairs are as a team um you know they got to go into tulsa who um does have some question marks being that they're rebuilding and uh lost some of their big name players but um it's it's still going to be a tough game, as you said, former playoff team. And then going in playing Eddie Gage and that new defense uh, ran by uh, the sword. Um, and then obviously going into the, the championship team's house and playing in Denver. And then they get a little bit of a break. Um, week six through eight could be three wins for them uh, after a tough stretch. Then they got to go right back on the road to Las Vegas and play against a, a team that's pretty well ba built and balanced and ready to go. Last but not least, the Tulsa Desperados with a new quarterback in Deacon Nickens. I liked what I saw at Asanza Robinson late last season. Phoenix, the Desperados uh, never play uh, two games on the road straight or two games at home straight. It's home away, home away all season long, uh, finishing off at Charleston. Uh, the, the good news is that uh, they don't play Seattle on, on their uh, endeavors this this year, so that's good. Unfortunately, the, the bad news is they play uh, the Aztecs and, and the defending champs, so that's going to be a problem 
Um, it, it's a little bit of an unknown, I think, with their schedule because you, you're not sure what they're going to bring with, uh, with, you know, they have a new quarterback, a new quarterback like you mentioned. So it'll be fun to see what they have. Uh, I am interested to see that matchup again at the end. The last four games, three of them are absolute uh, crackers of the games. I mean, the three three of those teams, Storm, the Aztecs, and Baltimore, that's going to be tough. Uh, hopefully Charleston um, you know, has a good season and, and puts up a tough game, but those three games, right, that's tough. All right, we'll, we'll, keep, it, uh, we'll keep it with you, um, uh, Phoenix. Your thoughts on the schedule as a whole maybe some some takeaways um with uh, uh you know some teams or some stretches w- what's the biggest takeaway you have from uh tonight's schedule release uh well one thing that i it was apparent to me is last year there was three teams that were very very powerful obviously denver seattle and baltimore uh, only tasted defeat um, five times during the regular season. I mean, those are powerful teams. I'm not sure that's going to be um, what happens this year. I think it, it might be you may win win the league with nine wins, ten wins. I don't think you're going to go undefeated. Uh, a lot of matchups are very, very difficult. It's kind of like the NFL. I think maybe a little bit of parity is coming into the league. Um, I mean, if you if you win ten games, I think you might get a, a first round, uh, first on first on by, or you might even be top seed. I'm not sure, but um, it, you're not going to go undefeated this year. There's a lot of tough games. Robert, what's your takeaway from tonight's schedule release? Yeah, I, I think the schedule for all teams is is just a really good schedule. Um, like he said, I I don't think there's going to be a lot of teams with you know, you know over 10, 11 wins. Uh, and I think down the stretch, a lot of these uh, playoff teams from last year, just due to the difficulty of their schedule, might struggle a little bit. And we'll get to see, you know, what they're made of when they're facing that kind of thing. Jonathan, any teams you think that uh, got a uh, boost or feel a little bit bad after tonight's schedule release? Uh, I'll start with the negatives first because, you know, I'm a – I'm a glass half empty kind of guy, unless we're talking about my team, of course. You know, I feel terrible for the Swarm. I've never felt more bad for a team. That first eight week stretch is legitimately going to be terrifying. Anyone that's on their team or or cheers for that team, I can guarantee you is going to have literally no skin left on their nails because just looking at that, I felt the stress in my heart and in my in my temple because that was actually ridiculous. But for teams that look good because of it. Um, you know, honestly, like I said before, New Orleans, I really thought they had an excellent schedule set up to at least make, you know, one of the, one of the lower seedings, if not somehow make it into not, not the highest, but potentially in that mid tier for playoff teams. Um, I think they're gonna have a huge bounce, bounce back year because of this, the schedule they have set up, or not bounce back, but, but, uh, you know, great move forward. Um, outside of that, another team I thought looked, I thought the, I thought the Aztec schedule looked pretty difficult. And I thought Carolina, it looked like they might have an actual, not a shot necessarily making the playoffs, but definitely improving and getting some uh, some some quality wins and good, just good teams to go against. You know, understand where you are, understand what you need to do to move forward. I think it's a good, it's a good, it's definitely a good schedule for Sully's second year. Andy, take us home. Your thoughts on, just on the schedule as a whole, what you're looking most forward to, and uh, give us a team maybe that didn't make the playoffs that you think uh, this is, now that you've seen their schedule, they got this. Well, I, I think overall, when I look at across the schedules uh, all across the league, I think there's more parity. I think, um, you know, uh, whoever spoke first, I think it was Phoenix, really hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, this isn't going to be a playoff race where a couple teams separate themselves and really uh, set off. I, I, you know, I, I really believe here, Cam, that this is going to come down to a five to six team tiebreaker for maybe three or four different playoff spots, just with the way that this schedule is built out. Lots of opportunity for those teams who maybe didn't make the playoffs um, to try and make a jump into that conversation, as well as a, uh, a lot of opportunity for some of those playoff teams who maybe were just on the cusp of uh, fighting for a championship, um, having an opportunity to put in another solid season of work. And then for the teams at the top, you know, a, a big opportunity to prove yourself against some of the league's best competition. So really across the board, I think, um, you know, 
the, the league put in a ton of work on this schedule and it shows with just how exciting it is from week to week. Um, looking across, if I had to pick a team that I think will really, you know, step up from kind of the depths of, you know, some poor seasons, I truly believe, Cam, that the Carolina Skyhawks this season are going to start to put something together that's going to be really intriguing um, in in that area of the country. I think Raleigh is uh, ready for a winning team, and I think the Carolina Skyhawks of season 14 have all the tools that they need. They have a schedule that is going to give them an opportunity. They just have to uh, put talent on the field and put them in the right place with the right opportunity to win. Uh, but I will say, I think it will be a team that made the playoffs last year that wins the championship. Uh, I, I think Chicago has not only the schedule, but also the pieces. I think Shan Varner's been chipping away at it ever since season nine when he made that championship. And I think this might be the Wildcats year. Well, thank you, Phoenix, Robert, Jonathan, Andy, for being here for the schedule release show. Appreciate it, guys. Couldn't have done it without you. Thanks for, to everybody that was in the chat all night long uh, listening to the breakdown. Uh, we've got the Pro Bowl next week, the rookie draft after that. But for now, uh, everybody have a wonderfully happy Thanksgiving. And the SFL schedule is not too far away. This has been the Simulation Football League schedule release. And we're out. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good one. Good night.